Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the new wireless gaming headset from Razer being the Black Shark V2 Pro, the 2023 edition. In this video, of course, I'm going to review it, but I'm also going to do a lot of comparisons to the original Black Shark V2 Pro. So you can tell, is it worth that upgrade and what are the differences? Now, first off, what I'd like to do here, so I don't waste anybody's time, is give you a quick rundown on what are the differences to the 2023, what are the improvements to the 2023 to the originals, and then we'll dive into that really deep dive standalone review of the new 2023s here. So first off thing that is different is the new 2023s are charging by USB-C instead of micro. You get up to 70 hours of battery over here. You got up to 24 hours. Your microphone is different. They're stating the microphone is improved. If you will do that microphone test in a standalone review over here on the 2023s, you also have Bluetooth. We asked for this a lot in the originals. It's not simultaneous Bluetooth, it's one or the other. And then you can also save audio profiles and switch them on the headset here. Synapse does not have to be open. Now, one other mild thing they stated they improved, there are the hinges here for longevity to be a little bit more durable. Again, the only time we'll be able to tell that, I'll be able to tell you a few differences I've noticed in the standalone review. But at the core, that is what has been improved, what has been changed, what has been updated on the 2023s. So you all know where we have to start with any gaming headset is comfort. And we all know with the Black Shark V2 Pros, they are absolutely, hands down, phenomenally stinking cozy. The headband, just take a look at it up there. Super plush, sports material, very nice and breathable. I absolutely love it. One of the best in the game right there. That goes right along with these ear pads. Super soft, super plush. Again, sports material. Material. A little bit of pleather lining in there, but that pleather line is all the way down. So again, your ears are not going to get spicy in these bad boys. Super plush. And right in here, since these ear pads are not the deepest out there, your ears are going to rest in here. I really think that's going to happen with a lot of people. It does with me, but you got a little bit of padding in here. So it's not really pinching or hurting when it's against that driver. Now, as far as adjustability on this headset, again, the same. And, and you're seeing there's not that standard swivel. It's on these arms right over here. But as you saw me move, it, it still adjusts and conforms to any head shape, which is why I state we always need swivel in headsets. So it's not just sitting like this, like we've seen in other headsets before, and then it's not going to move. It's just going to be like that. And then again, you have a gap back here and then a pressure point up here. So again, e even though this doesn't have traditional swivel, still moves around plenty fine. And that's how you get your adjustment right over here on those forks. Now let's go on and see the weight and we will compare this up to the originals to see if there's any difference since we've got a few extra features and functions packed into this headset. Slapping it on a scale, we are getting 326 grams, and I am keeping a microphone on here just so you know. So 326 grams on the new ones. Let's go on and get the old ones out here. We are getting 312 grams. So a very mild weight increase right there. Not even one that's worthy to talk about. You honestly don't feel it in the hand. You don't feel it on the head either. Again, with this one packing a few more features of function, you'd expect it to be a little bit more weight. But again, even right along with the originals right there, going into these ones, this is hands down, uh, like I just stated, one of the most cozy headsets out there. Again, right in line with like the Steel Series line. You know, this is just maybe even better. These things are like, I stated in another video before, putting these on, it's like putting a nice loose winter beanie on. It just goes around your head and it's plush and soft and you honestly forget it's there whenever you're gaming for long sessions. Super stinking cozy for sure. Now let's go and talk about the build of the 2023 version, which at the core, it's pretty much the exact same as the originals, which I will show you here as well. Again, your volume, your buttons, all that's the same. Your microphone's detachable. Now one little tiny thing that is different here, as you see the microphone is actually shorter, which will do that test and features and functions again. But the one you look at is the connection point if we can get some focus here. So the original kind of kicked out like that. This one has that extra lock point. So you know you're getting it right in right there. Really like that it goes in there and it's super firm. You really don't feel like it's gonna budge at all. I mean, the original was nice and tight in there as well, but this one, I mean, you'd mistake it as a permanent mic. It really locks in there really nicely. But as far as the core build to build right here, again, pretty much the exact same. One thing Razer is stating they improved are these hinges here for longevity and durability. I never had an issue with mine right here. I heard, have heard some people state that they get a little bit loose and then they're adjusting them a little bit. Now, as you're seeing me here, these are the originals here, the Rainbow Six ones. Mine are still pretty firm and I've used the heck out of this headset. So again, mine are really holding up very nice. It wasn't an issue for me. Now, weirdly, when I come over to the new one, they're significantly looser. Like just, just look at them. They're sliding up and down very easily. Now they're not just like swooshing up and down. You still got to give it a little bit of force, 
but it's again, it's just sliding a whole lot easier. So I caught myself having to do micro adjustments in my gaming sessions with this compared to the originals here, which again, they're, they're just slightly firmer. So build to build, again, pretty much the exact same. This one, as far as these hinges, are they gonna be more durable? Only time can tell, but I can tell you that the 2023s, my copy feel a little bit looser than the originals. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the features and functions on the 2023 Black Sharks, which this is an area where it's really gonna differentiate and separate these from the original Black Sharks. Now again, these are wireless here, which you can use on every platform besides Xbox. Coming up to the microphone, it is different. Again, as I stated, it's a little bit shorter. They said they upgraded this, which I'll take you over to my game room here in a second. We'll do that microphone test live together and take a look at the software. Sliding right down below that, you got USB-C charging, up to 70 hours of battery life on this headset, right up here your volume wheel. Now this one continuously rolls. The original bottomed out, and then you had that nice tactile step in the middle. No tactile step on this one, which is a real stinker, and then it just continuously rolls. Now, um, when you're on PC, it actually goes to your PC volume, so your rocker right on the screen will actually adjust to this, and you get a tone when you're all the way high, and then a tone when you're all the way uh, down at the lowest. So pretty cool right there. Come on over here, you got your status light with pairing to Bluetooth, or again, your power mode. Right down here is, again, your power button. And then you have your mic mute, just a simple press in or out. No tone whenever you mute it, which is a little bit of a stinker there. Coming over here, you have your multi-selection button. Uh, again, for your EQs I mentioned. So I'm going to show you in a software which you can press it and then cycle EQs, even your custom EQs that you save. Again, I'm going to show you this in a software, but you can hold it down for three seconds and you get into some Razer's... Um, pro FPS like tweaked uh, EQs, which we'll talk more about that in the sound. But again, this is uh, kind of your multifunction as far as sound profile saved onto the headset so you don't need Synapse open. So now you're hearing the microphone on the new Razer Black Shark V2 Pros, the 2023 version. And this is the microphone that they stated, Razer stating is upgraded and, and improved. And I did listen to one playback already and it sounds pretty darn good. You're hearing it in just a basic, standard room i don't have sound morph and i got some stuff hanging on the wall as far as pictures headsets and stuff like that i don't have any sound dampening or this is not a mic test studio this is a standard game room that that the average you know person will have that's using this headset so that's what you're getting right here is that true experience but why i have you in my game room is i want to show you the software here there's a lot you can do with this headset now so whenever we uh, dive into it here, you can see where we got the headset on here. You got stereo or THX spatial sound coming over here. And again, you got your EQs. This is my custom, by the way. We got plus three, plus two, one, 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 plus two, plus three, plus five. I pull out the highs a little bit, which I'll talk more about that in the sound. That's not our focus here. Again, you got preset EQs. Then you got your eSports. Again, this is that button on the back I told you about that you can press, cycle through, and it'll let you know. Whenever, you're like, say you're in standard, it'll say game, movie, music, custom. And then if you hold it down for three seconds, it'll go into these eSports e mode. Apex Legends, Call of Duty, Counter-Strike, Fortnite, Valorant. And Razer did state they're working on some new ones maybe in the future. And maybe you can tweak them and adjust them in like that. You know what I mean? And it's real cool. It actually lets you know down here. Here's your immersion. Here's your footsteps gunshots you know stuff like that so if you get into call of duty as you see you got a little bit more of that immersion that base that sub base down there you know really cool that it shows you that kind of stuff right there i always keep it on standard and then i use my uh, preset there now the other really cool thing here is you can come down into your game profile some other games bam sit it right down here and that's what it's going to set it to so say if you cycle it to movie mode and i got assassin's creed unity right there it's going to set a profile that i got saved to assassin's creed unity to the movie one so it, really cool that again you can set these and of course you can add your own game right down there and right when you cycle to it it's going to be that preset that you had for that game that is really really cool so you pretty much got how many was it up here you got those four different presets not even just custom that you can set to your game. So uh, that's, that's really cool as far as which one you like right there. Now, coming on down here, you got your volume of your headset. Now let's go to enhancement. Do not disturb as far as Bluetooth, so on and so forth. Your sound normalization. And this is what I keep it on. I'm going to dabble with it here and there. 50%. Uh, Voice clarity, 55%. Sometimes I pull this up a little bit more. It's just going to pull out a few more highs. Then bass boost, depending what I'm playing, you can pull out the bass boost. So then that kind of goes in play with the EQ right there just to get mild tweaks. 
Now, this is what we want to focus on here, though, is the microphone. So as you see, the microphone set at 70%, and this is where it is in my mouth. It's not directly in front of my mouth. As I stated, this microphone is shorter than the uh, previous Black Sharks. Now, one thing I want to test here before we dive into more of this is you all remember the previous Black Sharks. It really varied if you pulled it further away or had it closer. Right now, it is, I'd say maybe a finger and a half length. If I pull it closer, I don't, I don't like my microphones right up on my mouth, but if I pull it closer, this is what it sounds like. Now let's go ahead and pull it like halfway out, right down here. Maybe if I pull it down a little bit so it's not in my face. This is probably how I use my microphones most of the time. Might not be the best because you might pick up a little bit more room environment. I don't know. We're going to test a few more things. But I figure that standard range, again, one finger right there, not really in my sight. So anyways, over here, we got our voice gate, control the threshold of the microphone input right there. You have an enhancements, and this is what I want to test. So you got volume normalization. I'm going to keep it right at that standard thing. We're just going to click these and try them together. So here we go. Volume normalization is set to 55%. Just getting that core, seeing if it sounds any different right there with normalization on or off. Let's click that off, and again, now we're back to that regular microphone. No tweaking or anything. Volume still at 70. Vocal clarity. Let's go on and click this. Again, it's at 55%, and here we go. This is what it sounds like with the vocal clarity on as far as the microphone. Again, standard room here set right in the middle so you can tweak it higher or lower and see what that is. Now, mic noise cancellation. This one I'm really concerned about. I'd like to see how this sounds. So my PCs, I don't want to say it's chugging, but the fans are running down it, right? And we got this at 55%. So let me go on. I don't know if I press the keys. Okay, it's just going to move that. So let me just uh, press a couple keys here. I want to see if it's canceling. Like if you're gaming, basic WASD, is it going to cancel that out right there? Now let me go on and just, I want to test and see what it does at 100%. If I'm just typing a keyboard, WASD and gaming, if I snap up here, clap up here, back to the keyboard, that's at 100%. Let's pull it down just to test 20%. Because again, I think the noise cancellation will be one of the features that a lot of you guys are really into because I think the core microphone sound already sounds good. Let's put that back up at 50. Let's go on and turn that off. And now, again, we are back at that core microphone here. Now, we're not done yet, though. Look at right down here. Microphone equalizer. You can dabble with your own, create your own EQ here. And then you go in here, microphone boost, some presets, broadcast, which I thought the microphone sounded real nice and broadcasty before. Conference, you got the conference here, which you can pull out some more of the highs. And then again, you have your custom, which uh, this is what ours has been at, just that basic flat microphone. So you're getting that core out of the gate sound. Now, when you come down here, you got your mic monitoring or your side tone. I'm going to click that on right now. And let me tell you what, guys, at 50%, this is a very nice side tone. It's, it's not peaking high. It's not too low. I'm not struggling to hear it. It's really, really nice side tone. Now, if I pull it down to like 18, down toward the lower end, which a lot of headsets, when you pull it down to this lower end, you lose side tone. You really don't hear anything. You got to be at 50% plus. Even down here in 18, it's pretty nice and manageable. It, it really is, but I catch myself hollering a little bit more. I really do. Now, if I pull it all the way up to 100, this is one of the louder ones. It's very loud. Like right now, I can't hear myself talking, you know, outside of the headphone or anything like that. The headset, I hear myself literally just almost hollering in my ear. So I really think on this headset here that 50, give or take, maybe 60%, 50 to 60% is a really nice sweet spot. And the side tone is fantastic on this headset. Again, a really nice, true, pure side tone. Let's go on over here, and then again, you have your power uh, savings right there as far as auto shut off. So as far as the microphone and a standard gaming setup, looking at the software here, again, uh, just as you all know, my microphones are plugged and played. I, I'm not using any fancy software to tweak it. I simply plug in the dongle and record it, and that's what you're hearing. Now, what I want to do real quick is plug in the old Black Sharks just to so get that quick comparison to see if it is improved. I got it on Mic Boost. Let me go ahead and put this to default. We had that on microphone boost right there. So maybe some of the other tests might not have been fair, but now we are on default here. Let me go into uh, volume normalization on 55%, seeing that sounds like right here. Click that off, back to normal. Now we're going to go in and get the vo vocal clarity. Again, keeping it right in the middle at 55% to see that difference compared to the original microphone without any tweaks. Clicking that off. Now we're going to go into mic noise cancellation. 
And then again, you can hear that right now. This is the mic noise cancellation. If we click some keys, we have that right there. If I clap up here, we can see the difference. But again, a tweak in any of this, I think, is it's cool, right? It's cool that we can do it. But at the core, we got to compare that core microphone to microphone. We're on default. Now we're on microphone boost here in the originals. Now we're going to click over to broadcast and see what the Black Shark V2 Pro sound like. Now we're going to swing over to conference. And you can see these EQs are a little different compared to the original one right there, right? And then we got custom, which again is set to default, which is that base core uh, flat sound right there, which is a really, um, again, I thought a pretty good sound. Side tone, again, pretty much the exact same as the other one. When I crank it up to 100 here, it's not nearly as loud as the um, V2, the 2023s, but when I bring it down to 50, it's pretty much 50, again, 50, 60 range, somewhere right around there. They do sound very similar, but the difference is whenever you come up to 100, these don't sound like I'm yelling my ears. It's pretty manageable actually but those when you crank up to 2023s to 100 again it's it's loud it's very loud in your ears and then of course you have your power saving over here but again at the core we were comparing the new 2023 microphone to the original microphone to see if there's any improvement and if it's worth that upgrade for the microphone quality so i just listened to both microphone playbacks right there and it's night and day it's no brainer the microphone on the new 2023s is absolutely phenomenal i'm gonna say the best microphone i've heard on a wireless gaming headset if not a wired one i mean it sounded so good and i'm talking at the core right not even tweaking it or adjusting it to your liking right there at the core this microphone sounded great now i apologize for having that mic boost that's what kind of jacked up this mic test in the beginning when i turned it off it definitely rounded out a lot of a lot better now it's not bad by any means it definitely gets the job done but when you compare it to something like this Again, it's night and day, and man, that microphone is awesome on the new 2023s. Now let's go and talk about sound on a new 2023 version of the Black Shark V2 Pros. And this is where they are very similar, but also very different compared to the original ones. As far as similarities, 50 millimeter Triforce drivers, the freaks range of 12 to 28,000 right there. And as far as the Triforce drivers, if you haven't tested them, they are awesome. There's something you got to try. Really lets all the sound kind of breathe on its own as far as the, the mids, the trebles, and the bass. Nothing's jumbled. Nothing's rumbly. Nothing's muddy. You really get that performance for, again, immersion in a story game or an FPS game. You really get all that separation. It's really nice, fun, manageable, and detailed sound. It's, it's, it's really nice here. Not overly bass heavy, but I would say Maybe the mids kind of round out a little bit more in this headset. As you saw in my EQ, I pull out the highs a little bit more because I, I do like a little bit of crispiness in there. And the out-of-the-box sound of this is definitely a little bit more, I don't want to say bass heavy, I'd say a little more mid heavy, but don't take that as a muddy sound because it's not muddy, it's maybe immersion. I, I don't know how you want to word it right there, but again, I prefer to pull out a little bit of highs within a black shirt. That goes right along with the other ones right there. But at the core sound of this headset, it's one of those headsets that get you by an FPS game, get you by in a story game, a racing game, some movies, some music, some videos. It's that headset, that sound that I think a lot of us can get down with. It's going to be manageable for a lot of us. And it's going to, again, get you across all those different situations right there. It's such a fantastic, really natural sound that, again, it's that headset where you don't feel yourself having to switch it. Okay, I'm gonna play FPS, let me get something else. No, because you can really have that. And now being able to switch those EQs on this headset, that's honestly game changing. That that really is, having all the options. You got like, what was it, eight different EQs you can cycle from when you get into the FPS mode and stuff like that, and then your customs. You have so many different options to choose and set on this headset and cycle through per game. So it's even better now. You got that core sound, but now being able to tweak it to what you want, to what you're playing, yo, that's that's phenomenal. Now, one other thing I want to talk about as far as sound here is the Bluetooth, as you've heard me mention before. Unfortunately, the Bluetooth on this headset is not simultaneous. You double press the button right there, and it's going to cycle from one to the other, right? Whether it be Bluetooth or your wireless. Um, by the way, not sure if I mentioned it. You can use this wirelessly or Bluetooth while it is charging also. So anyways, back to the Bluetooth here. With it not being simultaneous, yeah, that is a stinker. But it's cool that you still have your Bluetooth. You all know Bluetooth on a headset is like a must for me. Again, with my son being in school or, you know, just, just being able to 
get a phone call or something like that, something syncing from my phone to it right there, rather than being wrapped up into this game that I'm totally, you know, involved in and just blocking out. That's really not my style. I like knowing what's going on, you know, so having that Bluetooth is cool. Being able to cycle through it, again, if you wanted to just use it on the road with your phone, you still have that right there, you know, and then again, you can use it uh, 2.4 as well. So cool to have both stinker that it's not simultaneous, but again, it's still doing what we need. So now that we had a good look over the 2023 Black Shark V2 Pros, we have a couple questions we need to answer here. Number one, is it worth the MSRP, the asking price of 200 bucks? Yes. I do think it is. We've been testing a lot of awesome headsets. If you all have been around, uh, go check out some of my most recent videos. Those headsets have been phenomenal. All of them have been $300 plus, you know? So, so, so yeah, there's better headsets out there, but again, what price bracket are you in is where you got to break it down with. And at 200 bucks, I love what this is offering. Again, it's given everything you want at a manageable price point for a wireless headset here. But the more important question I think is, is it worth the upgrade or should you buy these over those? Because you can get these for around 120 bucks now. Again, not the Rainbow Six version, probably the wider black version. Around 100, 120 bucks right there. Let, let's start with, is it worth the upgrade? <sighs> well, that's really gonna depend on you. How important is that Bluetooth and how important is that microphone? Those are the two things I think are gonna be important. Okay, let, let's throw in the EQ, cycling the EQs. How important and how often are you gonna do this? Do you just play Warzone? Do you just play Fortnite? Are you just playing immersive story games? Well, you're not gonna have to cycle EQs. I, I really don't think you're gonna. And if you're playing story games, well, you're not gonna need the microphone. You know what I mean? Do you need Bluetooth? Well, that, that's, that's gonna be up to you right there. So again, break it down to what are you doing with your headset? What are you playing? And then you can truly answer that. Me personally, Yes, again, the Bluetooth is game changer for me. Now, on the other hand, I don't use gaming headset microphones. I use my Elgato microphone, it's sitting right there all the time, and that's what it is. So, as fantastic as this microphone is, I personally still would not use it. I do use the EQ changing. So, I gotta sit here myself and say, okay, well, am I gonna use the EQ adjustment, and then am I going to use the Bluetooth? Yes and yes, and is it worth that $80 increase? My book? Yes, again, but don't put the originals off your list. Again, if you're looking for more of a budget gaming headset, I say that lightly, right? 100 bucks, 120 bucks is still uh, up there. I still think this is an awesome headset to keep on your list for 120 bucks. So break it down to what you want right there. Again, how are you gonna utilize your headset? I think it's offering a great package for its price point, but you have to decide. Not more importantly, is this worth the price point? Because they're so similar but how are you gonna utilize your headset? And that's what's gonna justify the difference. That's the biggest thing we can take away right here. So there we go, my review of the new 2023 Razer Black Shark V3 Pros. I hope I answered all the questions you would have, comparisons to these or whatever. If you got any more, ask right down in the comments. Always glad to talk shop. And again, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope I was able to help out. If I was, hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.